Hello, I'm Scott with Cochrane Tech Services. This video is all about trying to demystify and remove all that crazy black magic that is PID control loops. Yeah, we know they can be kind of scary. We know that most people that have ended up learning about PID loops, especially in the field, have been just total trial by fire. This video is for those people that are in that position that are trying to figure this out in the middle of the night because some air handler is blowing crazy hot air when it doesn't need to, or because some robotic arm is going wild in some factory. So first you need to understand what a PID loop is for. A PID loop is for controlling something. What we're going to end up controlling is called the control variable. That makes sense. Or the input. They're synonymous. They're talking about the same thing. What are we controlling that thing to? Well, some set point. It's usually called set point. So how do we determine how to tune a PID loop? What factors come into play? Well, there are lots of environmental factors that come into play. The accuracy of sensors, the fidelity of your PID loop, what your settings are. So let's talk about some of those settings. If we're just using the P in a PID loop, just the proportional band, sometimes it's called gain, what we need to do to determine our output is we're going to take the difference between our space temperature, in this case, our control variable is space temperature, and we're going to compare that to set point to find some difference, and then we're going to multiply that difference by the value of our proportion. When we do that, we're going to get some output. Now, that's just when we're using proportion control within a PID loop. So if my space temp was 72 and my space set point was 70, I would have a difference of 2. I could then multiply that by whatever my proportional band is. Maybe it's 10. If it is 10, my output would be 20. Right? That makes sense. So let's set that up. I'll set up my PID loop for proportion of 10. I'll set my analog space temperature value to be 72 and my set point to equal 70. And we'll simulate this particular project. Here, doesn't that prove concept? My space temp 72, set point is 70. That's a difference of two. My proportion is 10. My output is 20%. But notice that my output doesn't change. It just stays at 20%. And what if that space never cools below 72? Well, our output would stay at 20%. And that's not what we want. We want this to approach the set point rather quickly if we can. So the way we do that is with the integral control. The proportion is always some constant integer, right? It's going to be some integer, whatever, 10, 50, 100, whatever. The integral is also an integer, but it's actually measured in seconds. The domain there is seconds. So what the integral actually does is it says, hey, right now at the start of the PID loop, what should my output be based on a proportion? Well, you know, that's 20. If I had an integral value at, say, 30, remember, that's seconds. That's a measure of time. If our integral value was 30 seconds, we would reassess that PID loop and say, hey, What's our difference now? Can we add the output to our output? Yeah, absolutely we can. So if our original output was 20, after 30 seconds, we're going to reassess this difference again, which is still 2. 2 times our proportional amount would equal 20. And after 30 seconds, we're going to add our new output to our old one, and we're going to get 40. In the scenario, we're using the units of percent, so it'd be 40%. And another 30 seconds goes by. We add another 20% if our space temperature isn't any closer to the set point. There it is. It goes to 60%. So over time, we can see that this is probably going to get to set point significantly more quickly. What that might look like on a graph, here's my little graph. In green will be my set point. That's constant. And maybe in red, here's my proportion. It might say up oh, 20%. And it's basically going to stay there. Maybe it did eventually get a little closer and it got further. The proportion went down because the difference went down. Okay, great. That's not really good control. Where if we used PI control, oh, ho, ho, we would probably get to set point rather quickly. And we would kind of oscillate around it just for a moment. 
and we would settle at that set point, whatever our space temperature set point was. And it'll actually maintain that. Even as space temp changes, it'll auto-correct itself. That's why the integral is so important. It allows that auto-correcting function of a PID control loop. But we haven't even talked about the derivative part yet. I'll put derivative in yellow. When we're using PI and D and the derivative, what happens is we usually shorten the amount of time it took for our space temperature to hit set point. So if this took, say, 30 minutes, if we had a really fine-tuned PID loop where our derivative was a, a perfect and changing amount, we would minimize that time it took to get to set point for maybe 30 minutes to more like 10 minutes. And it really eliminates this dead space, which is what this is called. This dead space I'm highlighting in yellow would really get thinned out. So we can see how important a derivative could be in really, really precise controls. Typically, we see the derivative control part of a PID control loop in things like boilers, in things like PLC controllers. If I add an integral time, say 30 seconds, and start this program again, we should see my PID loop change over time, and we do. How amazing. At the 30-second mark, I would bet that PID loop's at 40%. You want to wait? No, we're not going to wait. Just thought that we'd show you. Hopefully, this demystifies this a little bit, and we're not so scared of pid loops anymore. Oh, I get it. You guys have a great day.